Welcome to episode two of the low budget uh, rapid disk tutorial. Today we're going to cover the idea or concept of NVMe target exporting of our um, rapid disk uh, block devices. So in order for us to get started, we're going to have to understand what that means. What that means is we're going to create on, on, on a target server, we're going to create a rapid disk volume and then export that volume to a remote initiator where that initiator is going to import that volume and treat it like a local block device. So it's essentially exporting memory and then having a remote node treat that memory as, as its own. Now, before we get started, there's a few things that we need to make sure. We need to make sure that the right kernel modules are installed, uh, including the rapid disk ones. So in our case with the target machine, we're gonna make sure that one, the, the rapid disk modules are installed and two, the NVMe T or NVMe target modules. Now this is the in kernel uh, implementation of the NVMe target uh, code. Uh, we need to make sure that both the NVMe T base and the NVMe T TCP, since that's what we're relying on uh, for this example, are both inserted into the kernel. Now, another thing we need to ensure is that each machine has something called a NVMe qualifying name or NQN. And this can typically be found in the Etsy NVMe uh, directory path. File name is host NQN. If you don't have an NQN, the rapid disk uh, suite uh, actually has a utility in the script NVMe T subdirectory that allows you to generate or set or get the uh, a host NQN. So let's just do a quick example of how this works i'm going to set a new nqn but because i already have one there and i'm going to need to overwrite it i'm actually going to use the force option so what this is telling us is that our current host nqn is this and all external machines are going to see this when they import that uh, nvme exported uh, volume so you can verify that by actually reading the file. Now, the again, the initiator, the remote node that's going to be importing and it's going to need that same NQN uh, file uh, there. So let's get started with creating a RAM drive. We have RD0, that's 512 megs in size. We're just going to keep things simple. And what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create a, a, a port, an NVMe target port that we're going to tie the NVMe namespace that we're going to be creating to. Because when we create the device, we're going to map that namespace to that port. Port. So when the target, or I'm sorry, the initiator scans for the, the, the block device, they're going to be reading the IP address that's designated or, or tied with that port. And the user space utility, the rapid disk user space utility is actually, actually simplifies this process. So in order for us to create the port, we're going to need an interface name. And that interface um, we'll get right here, IP address show and EN0, you know, EN01. So let's create that 
port, you know, one, call it port one, and then we're going to be relying on TCP. Another option is RDMA. If you're using InfiniBand, you know, RDMA or, or soft Rocky, um, which is, you know, RDMA over converged ethernet. Uh, so, okay, we successfully created the port. We can verify the port with minus capital N option. Here's the IP address, TCP, port one, <clears throat> but we haven't created the the NVMe namespace and tied the RAM drive to it on the, on the target machine. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to export RD0 through port one and to host NQN. So the NQN on the remote machine is this long thing right here. There we go. On the target end, we're done. You know, we've 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 mapped RD0 to host this long name and the the it, remote device is going to see this NQN uh, when it's trying to import that device from the, the, the target server. And to verify this export, you just run RapidDisk with the minus lowercase n and you get a nice summary right here. So let's go on the, on the uh, remote machine, the machine that will be doing the import in order for us to make sure that everything is is um, where it is, we need the NVMe CLI uh, package, which is a pretty standard or common package that is found on uh, most modern uh, Linux distributions. But we also need to make sure that we have at least at a minimum these NVMe modules installed. So now that we have those modules installed, what we need to do is we what we need to uh, discover the the export. And this is done through the NVMe CLI utility. We have to define the IP address of the target node. And something that I should have mentioned early on, everything with the NVMe target uh, implementation in, in Linux is done over port um, 4420. Um, so you need to make sure that IP tables or your firewall allows for communication over this port. So it, it, we did a discover. It sees our exported uh, volume. So now let's uh, connect. So if we type NVMe L, oh, no, I'm sorry. NVMe list, see our block device right here. And it'll also be listed in, in uh, the DevFS uh, virtual file system right here. So if I do a quick echo of hello world, dev nvme zero namespace one, we should be able to see that right 
uh, back on the target machine. So let's open up RD0. There you go. Hello world. And that's pretty much it. We took the RAM drive that we created on one machine, exported it to another machine, and that other machine is treating it like its own very own local drive. And that pretty much covers it. So stay tuned until the next episode.